good evening. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, you guys. It's evening for me. It's after 8 Eastern time. How is everyone? I look like I've been busy, right? I look like I have been busy. I told you I'm selling the house. And you know what? I didn't even think about this, and I should have, is that when you sell your house, people are all in your cabinets and your closets and your medicine chest and all. I'm like, my goodness. But they really are looking through everything. And I've had a host of them, including open house on Sunday. Um, so did you hear Tucker Cow saying he finally came back from the dead to explain his side? And this fool had the nerve to talk about how media is an honest and uh, they won't speak the truth and they da 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 da. Don't you know you was just one of them? You, Tucker, you were just one of them. And if you felt that passionate about the lack of truth in media, then you should have said that at the time. Then wait, instead of waiting to get fired, you should have left a long time ago. Period. And now the Russians want to offer you a job? Mm, I don't really see you doing that. I don't see you doing that. Mm -mm. Anyways... I wanted to talk today about Mike Pence. Mike Pence finally gets his day to shine. <laughs> Mike Pence, poor soul. Doesn't Mike Pence always remind you of this victim, this victim energy? You know, he's he wants to be pious and a Christian and do right by God and all of that kind of stuff. And yet... He still wants to tell his story. Now, he couldn't tell it the way he wanted to tell it other than in court. And so Jack Smith summoned him on down to the courtroom, and now he gets to tell his story. And I'm here to tell you, I think he spent like five hours or more testifying, and he was spilling all his tea because now he has to. He's compelled. <laughs> Or by these people phonier than a three dollar bill. He didn't want to tell that story. He's really had to hold it back inside of him. Now he can legitimately let it go and not harm possibly getting some of Trump's base when he puts in his bid to run if he has it already for president. That is. So when I'm looking at him, it looks like he's taking some time to think this through. And when I say think this through, I mean that he has decided I'm changing my mind. I'm not protecting Trump for anything because he didn't protect protect me at the time. I was his vice president. He did not try to protect me. He was a part of that, you know, uh, he was part of that group. Right. And so whether it was through prayer, because he's a praying man, whether it was through his family or just a meditative thought, he realized, oh my goodness, this man did not have my best interest in heart. He didn't care about me or my family or anything else. He just wanted to win, period. And so now we see Mike feeling completely free to speak in whatever way he needs to because it's law. He's he's driven by laws. OK, he really is the law and order person. In this case, the law works for him, not against him. Now he can spill all of the tea. And let me tell you something. He don't feel bad about it. I don't care what he says. If he ever says anything about it, he needs to write a truth book. If the truth is in him and I don't think the truth is in him. He does not feel bad. He's spilling all the tea on the multiple conversations and all the persuading him to do what was not right for the country. All of that. He felt like Trump really stabbed him in the back in a way that was unbelievable. He felt like he carried a lot of the weight of the BS for Trump. He feels like he did the job as the president. That's what he feels like. I did the job of the president. You know, have you ever had that where you work for somebody and they've got the title and you're the one under, you know, but you find that you're doing more of the real work than that person and that person takes the credit. That's what he feels like. That's what he felt like at the time. So now he finally gets to speak his truth. And I'm going to tell you something. This is healing for him. 
This is the way he's healing. He's able to speak his emotions. He's a Gemini, and a lot of people think Gemini are not emotional. Gemini are very emotional. The, f the fact is that we tend to hold it to ourselves. We don't put it out on everyone else. We put the facade out that we are happy, go lucky, easy breezy, all of that. Because we can get very emotional. And then we can get very over it. But at the time that we are emotional, we need to talk about it. And that is what he is getting to do. He is talking about his emotions in such a way that he's holding nothing back. Any and everything is coming out. He probably is talking before they even answer, ask him a question. Um, the strength card here in reverse tells me that the strength card is usually about holding that beast inside of you, not letting that part of you out because he's in a secluded situation where this is between him and, you know, this is Jack Smith people or what have you. Um, testimony. He's able to say everything he wants to say in the way that he wants to say it. He gets to come across as what he is, the victim. And I'm going to tell you something. He was a victim. He was a victim of that particular situation. He was a victim of all four years because he, in one hand, took it serious. And this was just a heist for Trump. And this fool did not know until he did know, but didn't do anything about it. So now he doesn't have to hold anything back anymore. He can let everything out on what really happened with him and how he was victimized, not just on January 6th, but throughout the whole situation. Uh, Trump had been bullying him and bully is the word all along. Trump saw him as a peon or, a you know, the other P word, ladies. He saw him as that and did not mind stepping all over him. He didn't even deal with him on a, in a social basis. He is not someone that, that Trump would have dealt with. And these evangelical Christians who claim that Trump was sent from God, all they had to do if they had some common sense was to watch the way that he worked with, uh, with um, Pence. How did he deal with Pence? Were they on the golf course together? Did they, their wives do dinner together? Did, were they, was, there, uh, was there a social aspect to their relationship? The answer is no. He didn't. Trump never would want to sit up and listen to that pious stuff. That's like throwing, you know, a garlic or holy water on a vampire. Like, no, not for me. Ah, uh, he didn't. He did not care for Pence at all. And so, by allowing the MAGAs to do what they did, Pence finally got a chance to see that this man wasn't savable. Pence thought that he was going to save this man. You know, like save him, like like uh, you know, like you do in church, whatever. He was going to save this guy, and he was not savable. He was uh, Pence was in this sort of deluded state of over Christianity, if that makes sense. That you know, God sent us here to help the the poor, the impoverished, the spiritually uh, vapid uh, individuals, and all of that, and. There's some people you cannot save. You can't save anybody unless they want to be saved. Let's be clear on that point. But this the, Trump did not want to be saved. He didn't need that at all. Wasn't interested in any of that. And Pence really felt like he fell on the sword. He fell on the sword. He That was my phone. He fell on the sword for Trump. And now, like I said, he has changed his outlook on that and was like oh my goodness i was the victim yeah you were you were the victim and now having this opportunity to speak his truth takes him out in of of the choppy waters that he was in the overthinking and the being worried and the what ifs and the how comes you know because that's what we do we get in a situation and then we use our intellect to think in the future of the worst thing that can happen and the worst thing didn't happen except it freed him and actually he rather likes what's happening he likes the process he is enjoying it he's getting someone to say hey i wasn't a part of this but I was a victim of this like everybody else. Um, because he didn't see it coming. He did not see all this stuff coming because he and Trump didn't have that kind of relationship. He didn't know all this was building up. But now he's sitting on this throne since he has now 
just gotten everything out of him and probably will. Um, he feels now like I, I'm back to myself. I'm back to myself. I feel good about me. My creativity is back. And now I can make a run for it. He feels like he's not so concerned about the Trumpsters anymore. Like he was at one time. Those MAGA folks, he's not. He feels like there are people out there that are good Christians, that are Republicans, that would vote for him and find that him having to go and testify in front of Jack Smith or his people, that that was something he had to do. And this will be evidence that I'm a law and order person. I followed the law. I didn't try to get out of it. Trump tried to get me out of it. But let's be honest now, you know, Jim and I can be double dealing. So Trump was trying to suppress him from talking, not for Pence's sake, but for Trump's sake. He was doing that for his own sake because he already knew he had messed up with Pence anyways. That, but that was too little too late. It wasn't going to happen anyways. But anyways, Pence will run. He will run. He's going to have this sort of wake up call that says, you know what? I know how to be president. I can... I can be good at this. He's going to present himself, but, mm -mm. well, I guess we don't even need to know that, but it didn't even, it's not going to show, it's not going to work out for him. Even though, you know, he sort of had this epiphany, um, he's still got a lot of, of self-work to do. Um, he's got a low self-worth, believe it or not, like somebody else runs him. So it's somebody else's idea that he runs or that's boosting him up to do this. And he's he's willing to listen. They're coming at him almost with a soft hand, you know, like, like I don't respect you. But, you know, I'm going to talk like this for you right now till you get what I need you to get for me because this is important to me versus you. And someone else is helping him to to be strategic and to. To figure things out, but this will not work out for him, which will ultimately hurt his relationship because this is somebody wants a family legacy of being in the White House. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Anyways, guys, that was a short one, but that's all I have for you. Just want to stop by and say hi and try to stay a little more consistent if I can. All right, guys. I love you. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Have a good day. Bye.